Hi everybody, John here again. Um, it's been a while since I've done um, my hard rock and heavy metal video, so I thought I'd uh, do one of those now. Um, the last one I did, I think uh, I showed records before in the uh, letter O, and I stopped before I got to the, the next bunch because the next bunch are all. Uh, by one particular artist. Um, I wonder if you can guess who that would be. Um, got a stack of that person's records here, and of course they, uh, it is uh, Ozzy Osbourne. This is the first Ozzy Osbourne album, although technically, well, got a bit of a damaged sleeve there. Um, technically, it's uh, when it came out, it wasn't actually supposed to be. An Ozzy Osbourne solo album. Um, the band was supposed to be called Blizzard of Oz. Um, but, uh, well, it didn't turn out that way. Um, what's interesting about Ozzy Osbourne um, and the majority of his, his back catalogue um, as, a, as a solo artist is that um, he's been entirely dependent on other people. Um, this guy here, Bob Daisley. I mean, he, he sort of creeps in and out of, of Ozzy's sort of solo career quite a lot and um, really doesn't get an awful lot of uh, credit for it <laughs> and, and sometimes, sometimes doesn't get any credit. Um, so that's the first Ozzy Osbourne album, Is It Oz? Uh, next comes Diary of a Madman. And uh, I'm sure you've seen it before. And what's incredible about, the, about this is that uh, it's essentially the same musicians on, on this album. Um, and they played. Um, Bob Daisley wrote quite a lot of the music and the, the, the lyrics to the songs and things. Um, but when the thing came out, <laughs> he got fired, I think, and uh, replaced by other people. So, although there's this band here, uh, it Rudy Sarzo on bass and Tommy Aldridge on drums, um, <clears throat> they didn't actually perform on the album, but they get the credit for it, and he doesn't uh, get his name mentioned here at all, which is a bit sad. Um, in fact, I think his name, what's his name, um, Tommy Aldridge, has even sort of basically said, and I'm paraphrasing, that uh, it should be obvious to people that it's not him drumming on this record, um, but he's the one that sort of is credited for it. That's just on Epic. Um, I remember <coughs> hearing that, uh, yeah, so when this came out, the first album, um, Quite a big switch, I think, for, for what Ozzy Osbourne did before, because it was all sort of Black Sabbath is kind of really <sighs> grimy and sort of uh, doomy, uh, quite you know very, uh, let's say, uncommercial. But uh, this album is is uh, kind of full of hits, if you like. The intention is, I think, to probably yeah change direction drastically. Um, and the production on this, they produced it themselves, um, the band, which I think is, I don't know, I don't think it's ever a good idea, unless you're somebody like Stephen Wilson, you know, let's leave that side of things alone, but uh, uh, that's what they did. And the production is, uh, it, it sounds like it, it hasn't been done by a, a big name producer, which is surprising, because you would have thought that uh, Ozzy would have gone that way. Um, when they did the second album, uh, it's produced by somebody else. Remember who? Produced um, by Mark Nor Max Norman. Um, yeah, it sounds heavier and harder. Uh, it's still got that commercial edge, um, but uh, you know it's up a step or two. It's, it's got a thicker sound, put it that way. So the main guitarist on these first two albums by Ozzy Osbourne was Randy Rhodes. Um, he seemed to have a huge influence on lots of people because everyone talks about him. 
and uh, I think they were due to do their, their next studio album or third album, um, but he died. I think he died in a plane crash or something like that. Um, and uh, I think uh, so. Ozzy Osbourne was sort of in a situation where they had to put something out just to keep up the momentum, so they did this. Um, it's a live album called Talk of the Devil. Um, in the States, apparently they changed it to Speak of the Devil, um, which of course is incorrect, but uh, it's different from this one, so this is the British one. Um, gatefold Sleeve. So it's, uh, it's a whole album of um, Black Sabbath songs, basically, sung by Oz Ozzy Osbourne and uh, his sort of band. We've got Brad Gillis on guitar. I don't really know who he is. I think he's some sort of a session player or something like that. I think uh, Rudy Sarzo and Tommy Aldridge are here in, uh, in Truth. It's like a touring band. Um, so eventually, the next album came out. Ozzy Osbourne. Bark at the Moon. Um... Not a bad record. It's kind of it's like a step, step in the direction towards sort of the, the big uh, hair metal sound. I think. Um, in fact, after this, uh, that's where they go to. So here you've got again, like Bob Daisley, back in the band. There, um, I understand he's pretty much responsible for writing a lot of the material. Um, and they've got a new guitarist, J.K. Lee. So he's sort of the guy that replaced Randy Rhodes. And what I understand about this particular album in regards to J.K. Lee is that uh, um, Ozzy's wife and manager Sharon Osborne um, basically got him to sign a contract that, uh, you know, basically said that he got paid for playing on the record, but he didn't get any credit for the music that he wrote or anything like that. So, uh, which is a pretty, pretty low down, and that but she seems to be that kind of a person. But that, that seems to be Sharon Osbourne's way. She seems to have a bad reputation in that regard, you know, tricking people out of their credit and, and money due and things like that. Anyway, um, so on the next album. Uh, couple copies of this, I don't know why, I just have. But on the next album, uh, Ultimate Sin, J.P. Lee is there on guitar, but I do know this, that he made sure that he uh, had a proper contract in place before he did anything. Very good on him. I mean, you know, it'll be full twice in a row, I guess. So by this time, you know, yeah, here, look. You got like a proper big hairband. Um, and I guess, yeah, like this is sort of 85, it's when uh, MTV was kind of big and rock music, I think, kind of generally tended to favour, you know, this sort of uh, big hair appearance and that sort of big sound that you got from these, these bands. Um, so I think Ozzy's just jumping on the bandwagon. It's not a bad record. Um, yeah, I don't really know what I can say about that. Not all the tracks are brilliant, but some of them are quite good. Um, yeah, shortly after that, or around about that time, 87 I think this came out, um, Tribute to Randy Rhodes. Uh, and it's basically a, a live album of... Ozzy Osbourne and co playing whilst uh, Randy Rhodes was in the band. Paraphernalia inside. Huh. Lots of pictures. Famous guitar, the polka dot one. 
Um, I think actually he was he was like a classically trained musician. Anyway, and you get some nice little sort of write up by Ozzy on the back here. I quite like their record. It's a pretty good album. Um, and this is where I came in. So this is this is probably I would say my first. Um, introduction to Ozzy Osbourne. I bought this uh, around about the time it came out. I would have been a student then. I, probably, I think I remember I bought it second and um, it hadn't been out very long. And I, f I remember feeling a little bit sort of... Uh, hmm, uh, a little bit worried, like, you know, is this going to be one of those heavy metal records which is going to summon up the devil or something like that? Because I really didn't know much about Metal, um, Ozzy Osbourne, or I knew that Black Sabbath, where he'd come from, was supposed to be sort of you know a dark band. Um, there's a picture of Zach Wild, who's the new guitarist now in um, Ozzy Osbourne's band. But even here, I think Bob Daisley uh, did a fair amount of the writing. Um, so this was where I sort of you know first started listening to Ozzy Osbourne and at this time I would have been quite new to hard rock and heavy metal anyway. Um, it's a brilliant album, the guitar is fantastic and Randy Rhodes is, is, is uh, uh, sorry, slip of the tongue there. <laughs> Zach Wilde is an amazing guitarist and it certainly was here. I don't know what kind of music he plays now, I think he does this more sort of Lin Leonard Skinner type stuff now but um, this was this is really, really great stuff. Um, so, yeah, at that time this album came out, uh, although it was, this is more of an EP, I think. Yeah, it's a sort of six track live EP. Just Say Oz. And it's got Geezer Butler um, in the band. Um, it's not a bad little record, actually. I can't remember why they bought this out, but they did. And this, I think, is possibly the only Ozzy Osbourne record that I would have bought actually new from the store in its time of release. Um, and I would say that this is by far and easily uh, my favourite of all of Ozzy Osbourne's records. Um, it's, it's, it's an incredible record, and if you like metal, hard rock, I recommend this. Uh, if you don't already have it. Um, I know his latter stuff that he's sort of done in the recent decade or so doesn't really appeal to me. And of course, I don't have any of that on, on vinyl. I've got one or two albums on CD, I think, of those sort of latter ones. But uh, I don't really pay that much attention. Uh, but this album is, is really, really good. I rate it very highly. Um, it's got some amazing tracks. Um, what can I say? Yeah, there's um, a few tracks that are co-written with Lemmy Kilminster from Motorhead. In fact, there's a track on here called uh, what's it called? Um, Hellraiser, which uh, Motorhead also include on their album um, March or Die. don't like the track, I really don't like it, and I think it was around about this time when um, when Motorhead was sort of uh, doing that, that Lemmy was sort of moving over to LA to live there, um, and that's why he was sort of, you know, rubbing shoulders with Ozzy so much, I guess. Um, yeah, I didn't like that particular Motorhead album, March or Die, either. It's kind of too commercial, it's an attempt to try and sort of have hits, but that's not Motorhead, Motorhead don't have hits like that, do they? Um, but uh, apart from that, the rest of this album is really good, I can recommend it. Um, yeah, it's just on, on Epic. And that completes my section Oh, in my hard rock and heavy metal uh, album collection. 
Um, so next time we uh, do one of these, it will be P. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, look out for my next video. Cheers. Bye.